We start this morning with the solicitor representing former Celtic and Northern Ireland footballer Paddy McCord who had a sexual assault conviction overturned yesterday has accused the PSNI of targeting his client. Mr McCourt from Wheatfield Court in Muff in Donegal was found guilty in May of inappropriately touching a woman in a bar in Derry in January 2022. The former international who had denied the charge was given a three-month suspended sentence in July. Yesterday that conviction was quashed after prosecutors offered no evidence evidence. Kieran Shields told our reporter Theresa Craig that Paddy McCourt and his family have been through a difficult time. He always made absolutely clear that he was innocent of these allegations um, right from the right from the word go. The, the, the very next morning he was asked to attend um, a Strandwood police station. He was there within an hour. Um, he, was, he, was, he was kept in custody throughout the day. This is a person who's never been uh, arrested in police custody in his life, spent the day and the early part of the evening in a cell. He then went through very, two very lengthy interviews under caution. He was asked to take part in the DNA inquiry, uh, a legitimate uh, an, an inquiry in normal circumstances, uh, because pl- police believed that there was a reasonable possibility that the that the attacker, and this lady was attacked, that the attacker would la- would, would deposit some of uh, some of some of his DNA on either address. Or, or, or her underwear. Paddy McCourt absolutely cooperated with the, with, with that. He provided his DNA. And in normal circumstances, any person in police custody would have been bailed uh, with certain conditions, of course, uh, to safeguard the victim. Um, any any person in police custody would have been bailed for several months in order for the results of those um, inquiries to bear fruit. Now. Paddy has had this matter hanging over him for, uh, uh, for all this time. Um, he obviously, he has he hasn't been he hasn't been able to work. Um, he uh, he has uh, he hasn't been able to take part in any of his speaking engagements that he normally uh, that he normally would. Um, he he was he was trolled in some very very shocking um, and lurid and, and entirely untrue allegations were made about this 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 incident and and it's. You know, and his young family uh, 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 read all those postings, um, even through the trial process. It took it took a, a um, it took a 15 months to get to the trial to, to even have a trial uh, in this case. And here we are now, almost two, just under two years. Um, the incident happened back in January 2022, when his innocence and his good name and his good reputation have finally been. Uh, restored to him. And Cairn, what, you, you know, you just mentioned two years there, what has the impact been on Paddy McCourt and of course his family because they've been going through it with him? It was shock and disbelief. I, I think most people who were present were were fairly stunned at the um, at the verdict from the lower court. Um, that was a very, very difficult day um, for Paddy and for, his, and for his wife Laura. They were, they, they were in despair. And he was in despair for a couple of weeks afterwards. I have to say, one thing. One thing that I was struck by, I didn't get any sense of um, anger or disgust or, or community backlash. He was a man, uh, no criminal convictions, never in trouble with police, never any any of the sort of sordid stories or rumours or or or, or 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 press allegations of of, of, of misbehaviour throughout in any of his adult life or his professional career. Uh, then to suddenly face a charge of sexual assault, a charge which was entirely prematurely brought uh, that that was made. He was actually going to be re- he was actually going to be refused bail from the police station and they were going to overnight charge him. And the man would have been appearing in Derry Magistrates Court on the Monday morning following the thirtieth of January in handcuffs. Having to apply for bail, um, this is not the norm. This is not the norm, uh, in, in, in respect of how defendants are normally treated by the courts. Paddy McCourt was not investigated fairly or impartially. Paddy McCourt was targeted by the PSNA. And what evidence do you have, Karen? Sorry to cut across you. I mean, you obviously have concerns around the investigation. That's clear. But what evidence have you got? to point towards the fact that maybe he was um, targeted and, and I'd suggest that the police would say or the PS and I would say that's simply not the case. Firstly, he was charged prematurely. Secondly, the other uh, uh, suspect was not treated 
as a suspect. The DNA evidence, which was which was being relied upon as a cornerstone of the police investigation, when it came back, not in Mr. Uh, not in the in, in the prosecution's favour, or uh, but very much in the favour of Mr. McCourt, was simply jettisoned. The other person, uh, the only other person who could have carried out the the, the assault was was allowed to slip through the, uh, the, the 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 hands of the police. To top it all off, what happens next? In desperation, they seek to invoke the regulatory and investigation of, 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 of a fire sack, RIPA. That does not happen in normal cases. I've never seen a magistrate court prosecuted for a sexual offence. In fact, I've never seen a, a sexual offence case in which RIPA appears. It's featured, for example, in the Operation Arbacia case in which the UIRA were targeted for bullying by MI5. Well, now you can add Paddy McCord's name to the list of cases in which in which Ripper has been used to in, to investigate suspects, and perhaps you'll 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 understand what we say. There's more than enough evidence to properly mount the allegation that Paddy McCord was targeted for prosecution in this case. And why would he be targeted? He was treated differently. That's a question, firstly, that you should ask the PSNA. And just finally, Cairn, it's important to mention that there is a victim here, that someone has been impacted, that you don't deny, you accept that this person was assaulted and yet no one now has been held accountable. Do you have concerns then or would you suggest taking this case to the police ombudsman? Well, I think, I think that the police ombudsman, I, I think it should go a lot further than the police ombudsman. I mean, I mean, we have sought the advice of senior counsel in relation to bringing a rip action in, 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 in the High Court. This is a, this, I have, we have made it clear from the outset this girl was assaulted. Her evidence, we, we also say, is largely accurate. The fact remains that the victim was failed in this case by the PSNI in respect of their investigation, just in the same way that my client, Patrick McCourt, and his family were also failed by the PSNI in respect of this investigation. And it is a matter uh, that, 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 that we intend to take further. That's Kieran Shields, solicitor for Paddy McCourt, speaking to our reporter, Teresa Craig.